How can one born in the pit of life's struggles see past their own existence? When you have naught but a brass penny to your name, what truth can you know save hunger or the desire to survive? Power breeds malfeasance. Your kings and queens squander lives like pawns on a chessboard. It is no wonder the darkness fills your heart so. Soon nothing will exist without the taint spreading like a wildfire. Most that can see it ignore it, they shut it in a box in the mind. But no box is closed forever. The mantle has fallen to me to right the world's wrongs. No other will combat it. No other will see it done. The pyramid of society must be built brick by brick, stone by stone. But first, we must knock it all down. I am sorry for what is to come. But before rebirth, there must be death. With there comes great sacrifice. And I don't mean alien. I'm talking about the old that I had for settling down. Having a family. I could have had a peaceful life if I just took it. But I didn't. No, all I have is hatred from my heart for Carnifex. Every fibre of me being wants to destroy him. Wants to tear him limb from limb. Wants to char his body and smell his flesh burning. I will use anything and everything my advantage destroy what he's built. I will watch it crumble <laughs> and I will laugh. Nothing will stop me from turning his dreams to ash. The coward I was, once died by another to protect myself, I knew no longer. The coward shall be buried and the sorceress shall rise. Okay, this is chapter 12 of season 2 of No Peace Until Death. Um, this is a solo session with Ayla. Uh, Matt is playing Ayla. And we will get right into it. Um, would Ayla uh, teleport directly into the town, or would she teleport outside of the town? What would she do? Um, she definitely teleport outside, not, you know, terrify everybody yeah. by just suddenly appearing. Um, yeah, that's why I was No, she wants to, just, yeah. No, she doesn't want to be that much of a dick. Okay. <laughs> not to these people. I'm surprised. Okay. Not to these people, anyway. It's been, perhaps, a week week and a half since you've been here at the town of Heldur on the outskirts of Brokalon Forest. The last time you left here was escorted by Scoyatel to the tower you now maintain and live in. Um, this uh, place was violent the last time you were here with Zavis and uh, the headman of the Scoyotel fighting uh, and Zavis killing him with a brutal punch. Um, while you were here, there were certainly um, hostile thoughts towards humans uh, with the Scoyotel uh, clearly in control of this place. Um, you exit your portal in front of the front gate standing there watching um, as you don't see anybody about just yet. She'd uh, definitely used glamour before um, proceeding through the portal. Elven glamour? Here. Like you're looking oh, yeah. elvish, yeah. El very, very elvish. And uh, she stands outside the gates. She kind of looks up to um, the battlements, seeing if there's anybody just on the lookout, or is it just, does it just seem empty here now? It doesn't seem empty. You see lights, uh, in the distance. Uh, we'll say it's, um, kind of like the afternoon, uh, late afternoon, five-ish. Um, you see, um, 
basically someone popped their head up and you remember this fellow as the person who was on guard at the gate the last time kind of peeks peeks out and you see he has a bow uh, next to him who goes there I am surprised you don't remember me from last time. One of the ones that was escorted up to the tower. Ayla, Rathira, Sans companions. Ah, uh, one of the ones that killed the headman. I was not one of the ones who killed him. I was just among those people. Hmm. <laughs> Same difference to me. What do you want? And why are you coming this way anyway? And I've uh, come to discuss a certain problem that I think we have in common. I will say that I've shed the skin of the one who was ashamed of their heritage, the half-elf and the dwarf and the human. Hmm. <laughs> So you say, so you say. Mm. You see him here alone. Only me. Yeah. I still don't understand why you're here. Well, I'd like to make a certain proposition and uh, uh, give a... There's an issue. A certain uh, human lord who plans on destroying and conquering this entire area plus more i come to make uh, friendship ties and ally against this man <laughs> well it's not for me to decide i'll take you to the new headman i think you've already met them all right the door doors creak open as he disappears for a moment to let you in. Ayla steps to the gates with long strides, looking from left to right, fairly confidently going inside the doors. Yeah, let's see. So, one sec. Um, you head into the village and you see um, various um, people looking in your direction. All of them elves. Um, just as before. And... Got a, got a friend here. Um, so you see that uh, they're all just staring in your direction, and Gilbran is walking across the village. He isn't being overly um, talkative as you walk. Um, you see one man that you do recognize... Um, standing about he's looks quite um stern just as he did before you remember him as the man that um perhaps was the leader of the um villagers that had turned to the Scoyatel. he's not dressed like a Scoyatel. he's dressed very properly and he's kind of looks out of place in his black um robes Mm, I remember you. You've returned. Why is that? Hmm. You're slightly less friendly than before. I don't remember ever being called friendly. Hmm. Well, maybe I remember different. But I come by myself now. The people who you regard as my friends are definitely not of the sort. Why is that? Well, I'll be fully honest. I always, for years, had a certain confidence in humans and dwarves. 
trying to have everyone get along, but finally, after over a hundred years of attempting to make peace and getting along no matter how much shit they put me through, I finally came to the conclusion when my father came to a very long time ago is that humans and dwarves aren't worth shit. You only can trust your own. Hmm. Seems convenient. What do you want here? What I want is to both give you a warning and also to both offer and ask for aid. For there's a, a certain lord in the area, Lord Carnifex. He's a dangerous lad. He'd be making, and I'd be seeing this with me on eyes. He'd be making monsters and setting them out around the place. Tempting to lay waste everything they see. Hmm. This sounds familiar. My lord has told me something similar. He just arrived several days ago. To put this place back in order, you left it quite unorderly, I would say. I apologize. I myself did not want to get involved, though I was a bit of a different mindset back then. More of a, well, more of a fun, more nervous. Uh, I've uh, come upon certain strengths as of late. Oh, really? What would that be? I met with the one that was in the tower where we were led the alien she smiles a bit wistfully I don't know if it was you that I was talking to he used to be my fiance used to be being the opportune word I've taken up his cause now as he's uh Unfortunately, due to some very evil and powerful magic, has uh, departed from this world. Well, my lord will definitely wish to hear about these evil and powerful magics. Well, if you please, I, uh, I will follow your lead if you don't mind bringing me to your lord then. He nods, waving to Gilbren. Don't need you anymore, lad. And he ducks into a um, building nearby without saying another word. going after him oh um yes of course yeah okay sorry no, <laughs> i thought that was the... yeah ayla follows behind okay. um... you head into this hut um you see a which I presume is an elf has back towards you uh, his body makes it looks like that he is masculine. He has dark hair, and he's doing something that kind of gives you a bit of a surprise. He's whittling um, wood, and you notice it's a horse, and you are taken aback as this is something you remember from your childhood. Um, your own father doing and before you can even ra react Lystra says Alvor we have a visitor and he looks over his shoulder and it is your father Ayla take a step back slightly with her mouth like she hasn't seen her father and oh god like at least 80 years. It's been 
quite a long time. Father? Is he alive? He blinks a few times. He doesn't recognize you due to your glamour. It doesn't appear. What? Did I sire some bastard that needs to come back to the womb? Mm, Ayla dismisses the glamour. Um, yeah, he, uh, he in, immediately his jaw kind of drops. What? Ayla. I figured you were somewhere far away. Very far away. With I children think... of your own. Uh, I say not for luck of trying, Father. Uh, ooh, I thought you were at least back in the Dolbothana region still. Oh, Dolbothana well, needs very little now. The men folk fight amongst themselves it is time to put the fight to them that is why we have come here to the edge of Brokalon what are you doing here? I uh, coming here in my travels and uh, honestly you, you remember you remember Elian right? of course wished I'd never laid eyes on him so it turns you into a simpleton. My... She kind of rubs the back of her head. She kind of feels almost uh, like a child at this point. Uh, well, I uh, lost him a number of years ago. Uh, you lost him like you lost a nickel, or what do you mean? No, uh, he was taken away by some city guards. Uh, Charged with some human bullshit. Uh, I uh, was oh. looking for him for quite a number of years, and uh, uh, being here led me back to him. And uh, uh, unfortunately for me, maybe you're a bit happy about it, but he's uh, he's dead now. Can you give me a human perception or elven perception in this case? <laughs> uh, empathy. Yes, it's under empathy. Oh, ha ha! So funny. <laughs> yeah, you see him. He's got like what you perceive as a bit of a smirk on his face. Not at the end when you say that he died, but at the beginning when you talk about him getting taken away. But you're not exactly sure if it's just something plain with you in your mind he's always kind of had this kind of smirk to his face like he knows something you don't maybe that's just your perception but he's always oh, dead eh well I can't say I will grieve for the man what happened to him died of dysentery running away from some fight <laughs> being a coward no. I assume no, he died from well, uh, magical afflictions uh, inflicted by Lord Carnifex. Some sort of corruption. And pretty sure he was. His skin was flayed and only kept alive by uh, his own foul magics <laughs> until I came upon him. Well, I have heard that name before, Carnifex. That's... well, originally the reason I was here. I, uh... taken up the cause to... kill him. The plague that he's bringing about this area. It's human areas. These creatures that he has released, I know about them. I've seen them. There's rumors from our spies that it was him, but huh, they don't come to the woods. They attack the men. It is a civil war. Why would we help one side or the other? If all the men are dead, he might be coming here after. 
Sure, we can wait, and to be perfectly honest, if they're not attacking here, just waiting them out is really the best way. I'm fine with waiting them out. I... Because of Alien, of course. It There's... always has to do with Alien, doesn't it? Hey, I realize that I should have gotten over him years ago. He's uh, done some things that can't be reversed to me now. Does she still have the corruption lines? No, they go away um, with a little bit of time after you um, do magic that fail or whatever. Hmm. He's, um, whatever he did before death, he's, uh, well, instilled it into me. I don't know exactly how long I have at this point unless I continue sustaining myself. But uh, I have uh, an overwhelming urge to cut Carnifex and strew his guts all over his damn castle. Well, if this was your belief back some hundred years ago, you wouldn't have went off with that boy, and you would have been fighting the fight against humans all this time. Hey. And followed the ways of Mom for quite a long time, but it did take me quite a while to finally realize that you're right. This entire time, you're right. I should have followed you. Well... But you were gone before I came back. <laughs> why would I think that you would come back? And why would I ever think that you would follow me? I had real responsibilities, Ayla. To fight against those that have oppressed us, that have killed us for centuries, millennia even. I left I was you young. to you. He was young when I was sent off to go train to actually learn about me magics, but when I came back to see you and mother, you were gone by that time. I didn't know where you went. She just said you went out with a square tile. Would you have joined me in my calls if I was there waiting for you when you returned? No. At that time. No. So what if are we makes... talking about? Well, I need Yar, and I guess it's got title to help as well. <laughs> I do want to join the cause, but I also want to kill Carnifex. Well, I don't know that you have that in you. What men have you killed? And not in self-defense, of course. Do you? Alien. He's not a man. <laughs> I've killed some men in my time. Mostly in self-defense, to be perfectly honest. But I have killed others in battle. But have you ever killed with hate in your heart? I've killed, only discovered. killed a man for being a man. Not for any other reason, but he's a man. Ayla takes a deep breath and exhales. I don't know. Not yet. Well, you'll have to. If you want to join mm -hmm. our band, that is the price. But we already have a witch. No Scoyatel band can have two. It never works out. Oh, exactly. Oh, mine just call it the old crone. <laughs> is she a bit of a cookie lady? Big eyes and 
wide off stare. Hmm. No. Elven. Beautiful. Old, though. Very old. Unpredictable as well. So... You don't let your daughter join, then... I think another test is of your abilities. Are you worth anything to me? Last I heard of you, you were nothing more than a healer. Healers are... Well, accepted I, but you must be more worthy than that. I will take you to the crone and let you pitch your magic against her. And the winner, they can join our band. Hmm. Would you give me mm, half an hour, Father, before going? Pretty yourself up, do ya? Fine. Hmm. I'll be back. And Ayla turns and she is going to teleport back to the uh, tower. Okay. okay. So she kind of opens uh, a door in, kind of in the middle of the room and just steps through it with a small wave to her father. You see, as you're leaving, he like kind of cocks an eyebrow, raises it as you, like, pass through. Uh, let's see. Okay. Oh. Ayla is gonna go... Take uh, maybe a spare uh, dagger, anything that basically can uh, be used to at least maybe break some of that uh, Demetrium off in the basement. And uh, she's going to attempt to kind of quickly grind it up into a bit of a powder. Yeah, it's pretty hard so to she do. Can stand give, give, me, give me a craft roll with a, a pretty tough one at that. You can, you, I... you can use luck if you want to get it off. It's just oh, to, God, get, yeah. to get any amount of it off that's, you know, it's usable. I know, mm, I know what you're gotcha. thinking, but like yeah, you, yeah, even yeah. even to chip any off, you know. Oh God, I suck at crafting. Um, I'm gonna spend three luck in it. Okay, let me. Uh, before you roll, I just wanna give you the target number before you decide here. Yeah. It's gonna be the one after 14. I kinda get the, tar the target numbers on this game, and Heroes and Hardships are kinda similar, so. Uh, 18. Mm -hmm. It'll be 18. Okay. I'll spend the three. Ugh. You're able to get. S you go back down into the basement. Uh, you get close to these bars and. You know, it weakens you significantly to get that close to them. You chip at it and chip at it and chip at it, and you get a little bit out. You're not sure if it's going to be enough to serve your purpose, but um, you do get some. But after a while of chipping, you just have to give up because the just the proximity of the diamanterium just is making you ill. Mm, I... So, a bit queasy. She's uh, going to wrap it in a bit of cloth, put in a satchel. And she doesn't know it's still going to, because it's so close, it's uh, still not going to be the best for her. But uh, she has plans for it. How much stamina does teleport take? Oh, shoot. Um, true. I might not be able to take it with me. Uh, you can, oh, mm -hmm. you can pocket it. I mean, the diamanterium. I just mean teleporting oh. back and forth is going to cost you some stamina. Mm -hmm. So it's seven. Okay. Um, but could I rest in between to get it back? You get a rest of full, like, eight hours-ish. Oh, okay. 
So that's 14. Yeah, but just so if you're going to go back, yeah. yeah. All right. That's fine. Um, going right back to the room. Yep. Okay. Yeah, so she kind of teleports back into the room. When you teleport mm -hmm. back in, you notice Alvalor, er, Alvor and uh, Lestray. They're in a heated conversation back and forth, but as you kind of step through, they look in your direction and both silence. Your father says, Did you find what you were looking for? Mm. Uh, close to. We'll see. Well... Lead the way, Father. It's into the woods. Lestre, mm -hmm. you have the town where I'm gone. And the man just nods. And he looks at you. He has this very dour look as he just stares at you. And Alvor walks you into the woods. Second. You head off into the woods. For a long while, there's an uneasy silence as you walk with your father, who you haven't seen for eight decades. He has a bow on his back and a long elven sword on his hip. You notice that he walks with a very slight limp, and you might not have noticed it before because his hair was kind of covering his cheek, but on his cheek you see that there's a, a brand on uh, on his face, you aren't able. Well, maybe you are. Uh, you can give me a um, like a lore or education roll, whatever that would be. Mm. Ooh. Yeah, it's a um, it's a brand from uh, basically uh, Redania, and it's uh, basically uh, notes him as an outlaw, like a prisoner. Of Redania that they must brand people with. He quickly kind of pushes his hair over it to hide it as he's walking. Ayla looks over. When are you in Redania? Oh. For about 30 years. Sat in a cell by myself for, oh, 27 of them. Ayla looks sympathetic and she looks over to her father I'm uh, I'm sorry for not choosing to come with you he should have a long time ago your mother had one idea of what she would do and I had another there was no reason for you at the time to understand such things as the world and how we are persecuted. Dolbothana is a bad example of the real world. We're insulated there. Not everywhere else. Everywhere else, elves are treated like nothing more than shit on a boot. I know. I've traveled quite a long time over quite a few continents I always tried before to try and see best the other races even if they did treat me like shit 
I did everything I could for years to try and mend things, try and be good. Uh, she just shakes her head. It's a waste of my life. Wasted all this time. Just end up here. Where I really should have been. But I wonder if this thing with Arlion had not happened to you, would you be here right now with me? Probably not, to be honest. I... I finally gained at least some con confidence in my life. Finally have a bit of a backbone. Finally willing to die for something instead of be a coward. Pay people to protect me. I'm done with all that now. If I die, I die. <laughs> I'm gonna die anyway. I don't know how soon, but we'll see. Hmm. Well, if you knew the things that I did, perhaps your mind would have been changed. It was partially my fault and your mother's. Your mother wanted a life of peace for you. I can't quite begrudge her of that. Peace? Ayla, Scar. <laughs> it must have been quite a while. I don't remember that I was uh, jailed as a child. After almost setting a man on fire and I couldn't control any magic. Well, what she wanted and what happened was much different. I it was. Maybe I should have spent longer in there. Maybe it would have uh, made me less of a coward before. <laughs> less of a sympathizer. Well, I don't begrudge where we're going for you. You might not survive. Maybe not. No, if I can't defeat this Witch of the Woods. I'm not going to be able to stand up to Carnifex. That's just the reality of it. There's a saying of men and elves and dwarves and any people. Iron sharpens iron. When you put to the test, you'll rise above or you'll die. Well, hopefully I won't be too much of a disappointment to you. <laughs> you already have that. But, as I, I said, know. it's my own fault. I do take, take my own faults. I am no perfect man. Well, maybe we can... Uh... Have a nice drink if I survive this. Actually, talk as family. <laughs> Have you seen your mother of late? I haven't been back to Dolbasana in over 60 years. Last I heard, she wasn't there. Oh. I wonder where she could be then. Oh, I know exactly where she is. I thought you might as well, since you traveled the human land so much. No. Oh, she's in Brogue. That's what I've heard. She's married again. Mm. Ayla frowns a bit. Well... I guess if she's happy. <laughs> she's married to a human. Mm, Ayla's nose scrunches. Ugh. A human of lord course. of some import, I hear. She's completely disowned her own. She has children with the man. Half breeds. How long ago was this? Oh, I guess they're teenagers now. 
15, 20? I don't know. Maybe... Ayla thinks for a moment. Oh, this is over. Hmm. Just smiles kind of idly. I could pay Mom a visit. You know what we do to those that are race traitors? Oh, we kill them. Well then, if you are successful here, then I might have a immediate task to prove your loyalty. I did say about killing men, your half-brothers, to be their men, and your mother, even worse. At least those two had didn't have a choice. Your mother had every choice. She gave up the security of Doblathana. She gave up the security of her friends, her family there. Disavow me all you want, that is of no concern, but your own kin, your own kind, to go and rut with a human? Blah! <laughs> Spits on the ground. Well, uh, you have no worries with me, father. I only stuck uh, with elven blood. Well, that is reassuring. After this, perhaps you will prove yourself to me. I have not been able to get to her myself. But you and your magic, and your blood, perhaps you could. I'm fine with killing her if that's what it takes. Well... If that is what you want, to score tail at your side, to fight against this Carnifax, then that is what it will take. But for now, first thing is first. Hey. He, uh, marches you into the, uh, woods. Um, let me see here. I'm gonna fucking die. <laughs> you oh, well, you gotta I'll kill mom first, man. Mm. Uh, Let me see if I can kill this bitch. <laughs> uh, where is my. Oh, there it is. You had, um. through the woods and you open up into a large ravine and you're almost shocked to see this before you you don't know where it came from you have a very strong sense that this place is magical and you s it doesn't really make sense not exactly it's a face appears to be carved out of solid rock and you know that there's no mountains here of this size that would make sense. Your father looks around. Oh, we're here, I think. She must know we have arrived. Hey, it does look like it. Well. She'll be up in there. He kind of points to the mouth. She knows my mind. She knows why we're here. Mm. Well, if I don't see you after this, I do love you, Father. I always have. His face looks conflicted. Yes, I the same from me. I do apologize for not raising your right. She shrugs a bit. It's all right. I'll wait out here for a while. If you succeed, 
I'll be here. If not, she'll call me in. Ayla nods and makes her way to inside the sky. Yeah, you um, come up to this passageway and you see it kind of arcs up and right. Um, and there's a cave. Uh, he does pass you. Um, actually, as you get up there, he kind of... Wait one second. And he hands you like this... Uh, it's it's this glass. It looks like a, a, uh, a leaf, like a petal. Uh, and inside is this kind of shining light and you know these is this is like an elvish um, it, they're fairly common uh, among the elf elvish people it's essentially a torch but it's um, like an elvish kind of cantrip of magic sort of thing so you have a mm. light now she'll take it from them and give them a And this is goodbye. Goodbye. And she turns around and just makes her way into and towards the cave. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you see there on the ground in front of you is a blood streak, kind of om ominously uh, drug. At the end of the cave, you barely see the silhouette of someone sitting around a uh, light. You hear her voice echo through the cave. Come in, come in, come in, come in. Mm, Ayla. She... Look around carefully as she goes through. She'll start making her way uh, inside. Yeah, the figure doesn't hasn't even turned towards you. She's doing something at this uh, fire. Um, oh, another crone, eh? Another crone? I don't know any other crones. Uh, that's what they call me because I'm three hundred and eighty years old. Do I look like a crone? Mm. She kind of looks over her shoulder. She's like most elvish women, woman, just, uh, you know, beautiful. No. So what be your name then? Oh. <laughs> it has not been said in many years. She takes a moment to consider. Alacandra. Alacandra, that's right. That's what they called me. You be up in this cave long enough to not be saying your name, Alacandra. How long you be up here? Oh, this is my home, but I do not stay here always. You help the Scoia'tael fight their battles. Uh, that's why you're here, is it not? Your initiation? Aye, it is. Mm. Alivar said, You know his mind, and you know I'm here. Aye. Yes. She turns, and she has like a clay bowl in her hand, and she walks it over to you. A stew I made. Venison. Squirrel, carrots, potatoes. Mm, you're welcome to it. Ayo looks down. And she extends a hand to take it. So, we're apparently supposed to. What exactly? A test of magic. To the death, of course. Mm, of course. She looks mm. at you and you almost get the feeling like she's... Her eyes are narrowing and she's almost smelling. She's like, there's something about you. Something different. 
not simply magical. Ah. Uh, no. No, definitely not something just magical. What has happened to you, girl? Ayla. She smiles. And with that, um, she is going to kind of swap. Basically, she's going to drop the bowl and kind of at the same time grab at her patch or satchel to get that piece of Demetrium. Mm -hmm. And her goal is to shove it inside of Elecondra. Like, are you gonna do the whole blow it in her face type of thing, or is um, it, it's not. Uh, it's not the, grounded. If it's up. that crushed, uh, yeah, yeah, it's not I mean, grounded. It could be crushed. I mean, it's not crushed probably that fine, but I mean, um, yeah. Why don't you go ahead and make me a um, athletics roll, probably? Oh, uh, I'll use my one last luck point to do this. Okay. Oh uh, fuck. Oh, what would it be under? Uh, athletic. Well, let me let me see if that's what I want you to roll. Let's see. Um, how about let me look for a second. Uh, it's under dexterity. Um, I. Let me see if I can give you a break and give you anything like uh. You have skills in, and uh, it doesn't appear so. So. Uh, no. It's under dexterity. Uh, she's gonna make a like a perception uh, kind of roll. It's really price slight. Oh, so athletics. Slight of hand for or you. Slight, slight of hand. hand is fine, but they're both at the same thing for you. Yeah, no, all ten. Yeah, go ahead and roll that. I did. I don't know what it's got. Oh. Hmm. oh. I don't see it. I'll try again. Oh, well, eleven. Okay. So she is going to awareness. <laughs> um, as you're you drop the bowl, she looks at you, and as you get it out, um, and go to like kind of like blow it at her, she just moves away just enough where you blow it, but. It kind of like doesn't reach her exactly. She just shakes her head, and uh, I guess we'll do initiative. Um, yeah. Get a load in a second. Yep. yep. Hopefully. <laughs> No, just lagging a bit. Oh, there we go. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good. Okay. Uh, you are still able to go first. Okay. You are technically uh, only about two meters away. Mm, I can't do that again. So, I guess it's... Uh... Anywick, then. Of course it is. Yeah, of course. <laughs> With valid what reasons. What else am I going to do? With valid reasons, I'd say. Uh, let me uh, change the see. music real quick. <laughs> oh, wait. I think this is it. Oh, no. It would be a spell thing for it. Uh, yeah, the spell, you might have a actual, it's, it's, if you do your Thank combat you menu, you, it's in there by itself, I think. Woof. Um, what is it? Resist magic? Mm-hmm. Which she probably has. She definitely has it. No. Wow. Didn't roll. It's interesting. Yeah. It's 
going on? All right. Uh, okay, it's not working. There it goes. Ugh. There it goes. That was literally like two minutes after. Um, so you attempt this thing, and um, so you just she. It just you've never seen this probably not work actually. And, oh no, I have. Oh, you yeah, have. Okay. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Oh wait, no. I don't. Th I I think it's worked on everybody you used it on actually. Mm -hmm. Um. So, it's a little surprising when it doesn't, and she smiles and. You've made a terrible mistake, and she is going to do something. Uh. Oh, is it still my turn now? Uh. Or is it? Is casting a full round action or a let's see. I think you actually can spend stamina to go again, but let me make mm -hmm. sure. Um, she just says, Cast uh, yeah, my you apologies. Can, yeah, you can go again. Mm -hmm. uh, she says, uh, my apologies there. I found fighting fair is, uh, well, I usually lose. Might lose in this case too, but, uh, oh, well. She's going to attempt to. Cast it again. So this would it be at negative it's... three for second round, mm, second okay. attempt, yeah. Uh, and you have to spend like how many yeah. stamina to do it? Um, let's see. Second actions are. So negative three for that, negative five for the mm -hmm. cast, so negative eight total. Uh, she's going to roll her assist. It's negative three to spell cast, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Well, oh. negative three on stamina. Oh. Yeah. Okay, then I would have gotten a 17, but it's still not enough. Well, it's also negative three to your spell casting. So oh, okay. It's negative three for set, but then you have to spend three stamina, then, you know... Yeah, yeah, I did though. Yeah, she, um, it's just, you just don't appear to be very lucky right now. Um, she is older than you. You're not sure how skilled, but definitely much older. Um, and she is going to cast something back. So she's gonna cast. I don't have her macro set up, so. And then right. she's casting just to know what you need to do. It is this one. Uh, go ahead and roll me um, dodge or block. I'm going to or actually dispel. do. Uh... Dispel. How much uh, stamina? Um. So it's it's one over how much it costs them, right? Is that right? Um. No, it's uh half as much stamina points as they spend. Well, she spent one, so it'd be one probably. Okay. So let's see if I can even do this. Is this Oh no. <laughs> well, it just uh, fails. Um no reason to fumble it. So, um you uh, lose. Well, actually, yeah, go ahead and roll yeah. your final roll, D10. And does anything bad happen? Yes. Well, <laughs> it's, ki it's kind of... You decide. So you feel this inner, like, strength come to you. And just this whisper in your mind asking you to call upon it. Call, you know, just this whisper. This, Take me. Take me for victory. You will lose and die if you do not. You are failing. 
Carnifex will live if you die here today. You don't know you don't know what it's going to do, but you can summon it forth if you want. Oh, definitely. She's done it before and it was pretty great, so she's going to do it again. Okay. Um, I'm going to make some quick alterations. Give me a second. Um Um, what's your your normal stamina is 40, is that right? Yeah. Okay. Ooh. Okay. So, your um, willpower has been increased by 6, um, which increases your hit points to 55. Your stamina is total to 55, current 27. Um, your um, spell casting is now at 10. Your resist magic is now at 8. Sweet. Um, so, that's, oh. you still do fail. Um, mm -hmm. now, can you give me a, uh, block or dodge to see, um, what the outcome dodge. is? Yeah. She rolled a 20, right? No, she rolled. Yeah, she rolled 20. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. A five. It was a five. So, Ayla. so she, yeah. if you look, read the spell description, uh... What is it? I didn't get to see. Oh, did she not do it? Uh, let's see. No, it didn't pop up. What is it? On. Well, I, I have to figure out. That's why I didn't pop it because it's oh, it's basically how bad you fail is how much damage it does. Um, oh no! Gosh, ah! Almighty. Okay. This is bad. This is pretty bad. Um, okay. That's okay. So Kimley, Kimley Greg hurls a sharp stone at your direction. For every point you roll above your opponent's defense, maximum of ten, you mm. gain. 1d6 damage, so you're going to get hit by 10d6. Oh my god. Yeah. Holy shit. That spell's amazing. Why did I take that? That's the one that Zavis got hit with, right? So, here we go. Oh, yeah. That's okay. Oh. That's not a very good roll for her. Um, so, you take 29 damage, uh, minus any armor you have on... Uh, None. Okay, so just take twenty nine. Well, it could hit you. Let me mm -hmm. let me do a um, hit lo oh, hit okay. location because it could have it or triple it. Who knows? Uh, yes, that is true. <laughs> that that is true. I didn't want to say that. Mm -hmm. but, um... That's okay. Okay, so I did have it. So uh, fifteen. So fifteen. Yeah. So just all these, she like lifts her hands and all these um, rocks just pelt into your arm as you kind of like wince away and put your arm over your head. And she, you can see her eyes. She looks actually terrified for some reason. You don't know why, but um, so she's going to use her move. Um, what's her speed? So that only costs one stamina for her. Um, what's your speed? Five. So she moves way over here. Um, and she is actually going to cast something else. Oh, Jesus. Um, so this is going to cost her... Uh, oh, I took it off the room. So this costs, so to do it, it costs 3, so that'll put her at 26. The stamina cost of this is 10, so it's 6. Um, Alright, here it's going to be. It's a journeyman spell. Okay. Here 
Gonna need to make a dodge on this one. Uh, here is the spell, just so you know. Uh, can I dispel it or no? Y yeah, you can. You can try to dispel it. Yeah. Oh God, yeah. But there's the spell. Of course. And she. Let me. Oh, oh. Let me roll her. Spell casting. Oof. All right. Let's see if I can dispel. Okay, that costs one stamina. I'll subtract that. Uh, it costs five. Oh, oh, uh, oh. Because if oh, it's if it's oh, oh. ten for her, it's five for yes, me. Yes, 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 right? right. yes. Yeah. Uh, there you go. You're down twenty-two now. Fuck you. How does that look? The, the, the whole cavern starts shaking, and then. So the cavern just starts shaking, and there's like cracks that are ripping open uh, below Ayla. And she just brings her hands together and immediately, like, the cracks just seal and everything just stops shaking. And a smile just comes on Ayla's face. Oh, I can't wait to plunge the stalker into you. Mm hmm What uh, would you like to do? You're up. She's getting closer. But I think my speed is also five. Yes, it is. Just to basically kind of box her in mm -hmm. and uh, just brandishing that dagger, but she'll do anal wick again because mm -hmm. it's literally my best spell. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. It's a pretty good spell. Yeah, it's great. Oh, wait. Oh my god. Well, it's still a pretty good roll, but go ahead and... Okay, Ugh, so 20. 20, but you fumbled again. <laughs> again. Holy this is shit. not good. This is not good at all. Um. Okay. Um, you don't notice anything at, as of yet. She's going to try to dispel it. How much did that cost for you? Um, that was, I think it's five. Okay, so Let me just three for check. her. Yeah, it is. It says right there. Um, in, in the cast. Oh, yeah. oh, let me minus. Um, okay, so she's going to try to dispel. So she needs to beat a 20. Mm -hmm. Meat fails in this system, so... Oh, just keeps spelling each other's spells. Yeah, she, she's just trying to drain her. Yeah, she looks very concerned. As you cast that spell, her eye, you, she looks terrified. Not in a way that, like, she's about to die. You, you kind of notice this, but you don't really know why. And uh, you can spend stamina to act again if you would like. Will do. I keep going until I'm all spent. Oh my god, these fumbles. It's brutal. Oh my god! Holy shit! <laughs> okay, roll, I roll suck. a d10. I am, it's rolling. Holy oh shit. my god, Aelis <laughs> sucks. So bad. This is all because I snuck a decker, sneaked a deck. I don't know. Holy fuck! The gods hate me. Um, she's gonna 22, try to though. dispel again. Um, okay. So this would be, let's see, um, three for her against uh, a twenty-two this time. Yes! So she fails, ah! so she needs to do a resist magic. Okay. Oh, oh it doesn't affect her. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, Ayla's just trying. Um, pressing. She can't. 
she is oh man what's she gonna do um I'm gonna actually uh all right I need to do something with her here let me um think about this because I didn't give her any mm -hmm. I would say she has some in it though okay I give her that uh can you give me a um see something real quick. Just give me a, a spell casting roll real quick. Mm -hmm. Oh wait, I have to go into this. One sec. Yeah. Oh wow. <clears throat> Times three, so fifteen. She's get. She tries to run. Actually, um, with fifteen, she can get just about to the front of the cave. She like books it. She's like looking over her shoulder, and like this matches her demeanor not at all from when you first saw her. And she seems to be getting the best of you in the spell casting department anyway. But she's like f running as fast as she can. Mm. So, oh god, this is gonna use just everything that I have to even get to her. Oh my gosh! I mean, I could run, and chase, pace, but yeah. that would just mean she keeps. Oh, or I could just move five, because then I can still You'd be hit her. Ten at that point, I think, maybe even more or closer. I don't know. Yeah, be, she's you, you would be right about within five, I would say, if you just move five. Yeah. Because she had to go around you. Uh, yeah, Ayla is... I was going to say, stop running, please. We need to finish this. And she's going to again uh, cast in or... Mm -hmm. Or, wait a second... There's something else I can cast. Let's see. Will you fumble for the fourth time in a row? Oh, I'm not in range, I don't think. I'm not in eight. Oh, wait. Oh, perfect. Yeah, you're fine. Okay, you're I'm going to cast right. Raway uh, to Freezer. Mm -hmm. One second. Go. Fuck. Good roll. She's going to try to dispel it. Uh, so that cost you one, so it costs her one. Um, nope. What happens to uh, her? So she has to dodge. She has to dodge. Uh, okay, dodge. Yeah. Uh, dodge. That is. So, yeah, so for 1d10 rounds, um, she's frozen. Yeah, she takes that frozen. Go, just roll me a d10 real quick. Doesn't mean she can't move, but it, I think it yeah. hurts her speed by some mm -hmm. amount. And a lot of things. Actually. Yep. Uh, I'm also going to, uh, of course, um, use a three stamina. <laughs> use my last five yeah. to cast Anoak again. That's fine. I'm gonna paste this into just so I can see it real quick. Yeah. Minus three, minus one reflexes. This one. What? Minus three speed. Three minus one reflexes. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, I'm ready. Finally. Okay. Dealing with that minus three. Oh, she's gonna try to dispel again. Nope. She's gotta resist magic. Oh, resist magic. I'm terrible at it, but. Nope. Uh. Alright, so she's down. She's already down to five stamina because she's been trying to dispel. So she takes uh, 16 damage and then 12 uh, stamina well, loss. She, okay, so, um, for, so she falls unconscious. I mean, how does that look? So Ayla has, like, she's using kind of the, some of the last of her strength, just reaches out. And finally, she feels the magic kind of grasp uh, into her. And Alecondra's uh, limbs just kind of lock up as Ayla just slowly squeezes her hand as just all the liquid just starts to seep from all of her pores, from her nose, from her eyes, and just kind of drains into a puddle on the ground. Finally. And, uh, yeah, she's just she's unconscious. She's limp on the ground right now, for sure. Good. Ayla's gonna make her way very slowly. With the last her strength, probably taking a breather um, to get back. I think the recovery amount. Are you really at zero stamina? I'm at zero. Oh, then you pass out too. Fuck. Yeah, so at the last of it, she just kind of falls to the ground as well. Yeah, the last thing you see is her, like, fall before you as you kind of collapse to the ground, too. You don't know how long, um, ha how much time passes, but you eventually wake up, and you're actually above her, and you look down at your hands, and they're covered in blood, and the knife is in your hand, but you don't remember anything after falling down. You don't know how long it's been. You don't know really anything after what happened. Is the knife in her, like, is it full of blood and uh, oh, yes. does she have stab wounds? Uh, she has one just drawn across her throat. She's very similar to what happened with Ellie and what she did to him. She's going to probably kind of in the gut as well. She's going to slip the dagger in there. And not knowing if this is going to help draw any power or anything. Hoping that this would work or maybe it already has. Does it do anything? Yeah, just give me a sec. Um, oh, yeah, no problem. You... You push the blade into her stomach, right? Yeah. As you do that... Very similar to Ellie. Yeah, as you do that, you just... You feel unnatural. Um, you already feel, like, incredibly, like, strange... She's already very dead. You see your father peek around the corner and his eyes are wide. Um, and he's, oh, no. And he just runs. You don't know why. He runs away um, as quick as he can as you're like kind of stooped over her. And you look down at your hands and they don't look like your hands. They're long, very, their fingers are very long. They're almost claws on the end. You look at your skin, 
It's pockmarked and scarred. You are not you are not sure what else you can look at, but you just keep like looking at your hands because they look so strange. Is uh, the fluid the liquid that I drained out of her? Is it still kind of puddled on the ground? Yeah, it's, it's I... blood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I can't really use that. Um. Oh, you're you're talking about like her like uh, water. Just the water? like a reflection. Yeah. Oh yes, yes, absolutely, good idea. Yeah. Yeah, she's gonna try and look at a reflection. Because <laughs> Hala's. You look panicking. You look down. Point. And you don't see yourself. Instead, you see this menacing monster with black eyes, gold, like gold yellow style teeth, all of them pointed. You're jaw, bottom jaw appears to be elongated. Your ears are misshapen, not elvish necessarily, but pointed, but all like scarred and scabbed and warted. Your hair is partially fallen out. Par some of it's white, some of it's leaves these strange bald spots everywhere. And... As you look down at your face, your reflection, what's your response? Ayla, she takes a moment, she kind of stares down in horror. And again, just looks down to her claw-like, trembling hands. And she just lets out this horrendous scream. Your scream echoes in the cave. And behind you, like, some of it collapses from your anger and terror. And the screen fades to black. 